Now, a next generation end-to-end -end searchable encrypted data store platform has launched in beta version here in Australia. Cypher Stash is a new way to store data and to tell us what it all means is CEO Dan Draper who joins us now in the studio. Dan, welcome in. Thanks for having me. Uh, can you just start off by, by telling us about the problem that you're solving here with, with Cypher Stash? Yeah, so this ultimately comes down to the security of data. So yeah. we're probably becoming a lot more uh, familiar perhaps with you know, data uh, leaks and breaches mm -hmm. in enterprise. We hear about it in the media all the time. Uh, particularly recently, you know, things like solar winds and the colonial pipeline in the US and closer to home, yeah. you know, Channel 9, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, had, a, had a huge issue. We may not know entirely what went on, but <laughs> certainly something pretty major happened. Yeah. In fact, you know, last year, uh, last quarter of last year, the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner uh, released a report saying that there were 540 notifiable, these are the ones that were actually reported, data breaches just in that quarter alone in Australia. So this is a major problem mm. and it's getting worse with COVID. Mm. Mm. At the heart of this data security problem is where we store our data. Uh, and enterprises are the custodians of our data in many ways, healthcare data, insurance data and so forth. Um, but if we encrypt the database, yeah. which a lot of organisations do, Actually, I should say not enough organizations do. <laughs> Once you encrypt that data, it keeps it secure, but it means that it's no longer searchable. I can't use that data. So let me give you an example in a healthcare setting. Mm -hmm. Let's say that a nurse or a doctor needs to look up a patient by their Medicare number or find all patients over the age of 50 in mm -hmm. their data set. If that database is encrypted, they can't do those kinds of queries. So organizations have a real trade-off that they have to make. And so Cyphstash essentially is trying to give enterprises their cake and let them have it too, let them eat it too, um, by, doing a, uh, by creating a system that's encrypted, but also searchable. So we're totally changing, we believe, we're totally changing the way that uh, enterprises manage sensitive data securely. Uh, that sounds like a, a very exciting uh, development and um, something uh, that I can imagine would mean a lot to, to a lot of large enterprises. Is, is that who you're targeting and is it the people that have the most secure types of data or, or is that really everyone now? So I think there are many in, that, in this sort of infosec uh, in industry who would describe a data breach as a company killing event. Mm. Any, any company or organisation that is a custodian of sensitive data. And when I say sensitive data, I mean personally identifiable yep. information, yep. email addresses, phone numbers, things like that, uh, healthcare information, insurance information. Any organization that stores that data is at risk. But of course, enterprises are the ones that are under the most scrutiny and they have the most to lose. So we're certainly focused on enterprise at the moment, but we see a future where you know any company or any organization would want to use a product like Cyphestash. So uh, the platform is in the, the beta phase right now. That's right, yeah. Uh, who, who do you have uh, testing it? Or, or can you share some of the feedback? <laughs> so I can't, that, I can't drop can any names yet. Um, I'm looking forward to, to being able to announce some names uh, very soon. But we have had about 20 uh, larger organisations um, register to be a part of the beta and we're, we've uh, kicked off that beta in earnest now. Um, and these organisations are in, you know, the our sort of three, three primary sectors mm -hmm. that we're interested in, insurance, uh, fintech and uh, health tech. So uh, you, you're going through a beta phase. Take us through the rest of the timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, are you working up to, to I guess, a, a phase two uh, a product that you'll be releasing and, and when could we expect that? Absolutely, yeah. So one thing I've said to, to our investors and our customers is we're not building an app to find your closest coffee shop, right? This is, yep. this is a data security application. Mm -hmm. So we are, while we're moving quickly, we're, we're making sure that we, we dot the I's and cross the mm -hmm. T's. So we're, we're aiming to have a, a public beta, um, so we can actually start talking about the specifics mm -hmm. um, in the second half of this year uh, with what we call general availability, so sort of production ready uh, service uh, early next year. Uh, so t tell us about, you mentioned investors, tell us about the investment or the funding that you've received mm -hmm. so far, because this sounds like an expensive phase of, yeah. of, <laughs> of, uh, of scaling. Uh, who who uh, has come on board and uh, what's your runway looking like? Are you looking for, for further investment or close? Yeah, so we've, we've raised, um, I actually raised a very small angel round uh, late last year um, and then subsequently another um, Silicon Valley based VC uh, got wind of this through my network yeah. and, and made me an offer. We we're actually oversubscribed. I didn't didn't need to raise any more money, so we ended up settling on about seven hundred and fifteen thousand. That process um, resulted in uh, a flip up, so an incorporation in the U.S. So we're now a U.S. <laughs> U.S. Yeah. Uh, head company. 
Um, that gives us runway. I've got two, two very strong employees with me now and um, that gives us runway to about March next year. Um, but fair to say, we'll probably be going out to raise second half of this year once, once the private feed is closed. Uh, tell us about uh, what uh, kind of interest you have had uh, from overseas in a product like this. Uh, are you focused on testing this purely in the Australian market and then expanding overseas? Run us through the expansion. Yeah, pri primarily we want to get through that sort of um, private and general beta or public beta uh, in Australia. We, we say that mainly because we've, we want to be working really, really closely with our partner organisations and our customers um, and being in the same time zone simply makes that simpler. Um, but we've had interest from all over the world. I've had calls from the UK. I've had investors and customers interested from the UK and from the US. Uh, and in fact, I, this is unusual because I've been in mm -hmm. startups and, and business for a long time and I know how hard it is sometimes to raise funds, but I've actually not gone out fundraising and I've had VCs knocking on my door. So that tells me that we're under something pretty special. That is a nice problem to have. Well, it sounds like a very exciting phase. Uh, thanks for coming in and keep us posted. I will. Thanks for having me.